Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a great day. Earlier today I was watching a new video from Henning, the mad German, HP42 here on YouTube. And his guest is Martin Miller. And I guess the whole video is going to talk about the new Ibanez AZ series. And a couple of minutes into the uh, opening jam, Martin played this six scale run that really caught my ear. Um, let me show you. <laughs> That's great. And as with any lick that picks my interest, I just need to learn it okay. and add it to my arsenal of licks. So for this video, I thought it'd be fun to document the whole process of me learning new licks and incorporating them and programming them into my fingers. Now this video is not going to be in real time. I won't bore you with the uh, repetitive details, but I'll do my best to talk through the process and you know, just to let you know what goes on inside my head as I'm learning new things. And at the end of everything, I hope to be able to play along to the video and see <laughs> how well I did. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to watch the video over and over and try to figure out what's happening. It's great that this is on YouTube and the video quality is so clear that you can actually know where he's playing at. And if you know your fingerboard well enough, um, you'll be able to determine what he's playing in as well. So let's see, let's do that. It's great that I can scroll through the video in 10 second increments. Saves a lot of time finding the exact spot you, you want to start in. So the last two notes of that scale run is So we are in C minor, C minor pentatonic. And it looks like he's also reaching for the extended notes of the next box. But not on the fifth and sixth string. So together you have That's a big stretch. <laughs> ah, okay. The next thing to do is to figure out what the note groupings are in that scale sequence. So that's a good clue. The top note of each sequence falls on the beat. Not quite there. So it's 30 second notes. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but it is grouped oddly. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So three notes, five notes. And then the, the sequence repeats on the next pair of strings. That's really neat. I'm used to odd groupings, but I don't mix and match them. I have a similar pentatonic sequence that I do. Like that. That's just fives. So he's doing three, five, three, five. 
One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Now to confirm my findings, I just recently found out that if you click on the gear cog on YouTube and there's a play speed option. So let's put it to half speed and watch his fingers really closely. <laughs> I got you. At super slow speed, the sequence looks kind of like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. The next thing I need to decide on is what fingering I'm going to assign to the sequence. He's playing it using the Sean Lane approach of using one finger per note. Even though there are notes on the same fret but on different strings. The other approach is to just roll your finger down to the next note. Kind of like that, which is more uh, a Richie Kotzen style approach. The main difference being the Kotzen style sounds slinkier. And the uh, Sean Lane approach sounds a little more articulate. I think I'll use the Sean Lane approach. Okay, here's my problem now. On the lower strings, I'm not used to this fingering right here. I'm used to this finger. So I have a tendency to want to do it this way. Kind of like that. The way Martin did it is, I can do it. Now that this song sound right. Playing it really slowly allows you to be on top of every single aspect of the lick. So it's not playing slow for slow's sake, but rather you're giving yourself time to feel through the different aspects of the lick. This is uncomfortable for me. If I roll my finger, it feels a little more comfortable, but it doesn't sound as clean. So that feels comfortable, I'm, so I'm going to do Now the problem is going to that position from this position. I guess it'll just take some practice. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. It's also important to commit to one way of playing it for the meantime, just so that your fingers don't get confused. Because right now I'm, I'm used to rolling my finger <laughs> to, gra to grab adjacent notes. I sometimes find myself unconsciously rolling my finger over instead of playing it uh, one finger at a time. Yeah. Ah, damn it. Nope. Ah. Messed up on the last fingering. Not clean. Oh. 
Oops, wait, what? There you go. Now let's take a look at the picking. I only hear the pick attacks on the on the start of each uh, note grouping. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Now to solve the rest of the five note group, I could either do a, a slow economy picking, or I could do. Yeah, but then that makes the right hand a little more complicated. So I, I think I'm gonna go with the economy up sweep. Next group. Next group. Oh, that works. I think that's how he does it. Ah, there's that rolling finger again. Eh, no. Damn it. Rolling fingers. <laughs> ah, one more. Ah. ah, reinforce again. Okay, let's go for it. Ah, almost. Ah, rolled fingers. Okay. Oh, this last part that that messes with me. Okay, so the thing that's messing with me is that my fingers are still a little bit confused as to which should play what. This is how I should play it. Like that, right? But for some reason, my muscle memory forces me to play it this way. Where I'm trying to play everything with my third finger. So if you find that happening to you, you gotta dial it back down and reprogram it into your fingers. Yeah, see? As soon as I speed it up, this guy wants to do every all the work. Okay, we're making progress. Okay, almost. I, I rolled my finger again. Ugh. So that's the thing with muscle memory. Because once you get past a certain speed, your brain only tells your fingers um, what to accomplish, not necessarily how to do it. I am so used to rolling my fingers, right, that that is my default setting in accomplishing uh, passages that are similar to this. Okay. And now since I am forcing myself to pretty much learn a new way of playing something that I already have um, a default finger setting on, it's a little uh, frustrating. <laughs> Ah! Oh. Uh, see, it's changed again. Ah! <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pull it back a little bit. Ah. 
Sometimes you get excited, you play it perfectly for the first time and you want to do it again and again and again. And then you realize it was a lucky shot, <laughs> so to speak. And you try to play it as fast as you can and just, you know, keep running to that same wall. When you find yourself doing that, stop, take a step back and, you know, bring it down a notch. That means your excitement is getting the better of you. And if you keep um, running into that wall over and over again, what ends up happening is you're practicing the mistake and that will be even harder to undo. You want to reinforce successes. You don't want to keep hitting that wall expecting to break through eventually. Okay. Let's take a step back and reassess. That's, that's the best approach. <laughs> it's getting there. There you go. Oops, wrong note. Oh, wrong note again. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit. Give my hand a little bit rest. And let's see what the rest of the lick looks like. Okay, that sounds like an arpeggio. So C minor. There you go. Except that he doesn't play it that way. This looks like a like a, an approach similar to what Paul Gilbert does, where he takes the same shape and just moves it around the octaves on each string. Sinister Gates also uses the same idea on one of his solos. Uh, if you check out Avenged Sevenfold's uh, Hail to the King, he does a lick that goes like this. Which is exactly the same thing. This is an E minor 9 arpeggio. Now Martin does it in C minor and he starts on the root. Wait, wait hold on. Let me double check something. Let's watch his hands real closely now. Ah. It looks like he reaches back to the 11th fret on the first string. I think I got it. There you go. Instead of going, because it's easy to shift on the lower strings because these are adjacent notes. And then when you get to the second string, it's one fret higher. So he changes to a different fingering here. Ah, wait. Okay, let's check out the next part. Ba -da 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 -da. Oh, there. There you go. So this is like a like a minor ninth arpeggio. So you have a C minor seventh and the ninth, arranged in like a pentatonic two notes per string fashion. I think this is a modulation note. So we go from...
That's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's see where he goes from there. That's a A major. Oh, that's a weird modulation. Oh, there it is. It's like an A add nine arpeggio. So I think I have everything I need for that section. Let's play through everything slowly. Okay, I think that's everything. So uh, I'm gonna spend a little more time getting the licks under my fingers. So I think I've grasped the lick uh, well enough for me to be able to start practicing to the video at different speeds. So uh, let's try that. Okay, so we'll start with um, half speed. Here we go. Let's try that again. Okay, let's bump it up to three quarter speed, shall we? One more time. Okay, yeah. normal speed. Honestly, don't know if I could pull it off yet, but we'll try. Ah, right off the bat. Unumas. Eh, 
the bass tricks are still messing with me. Do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, so I think that's how far I'll go working on this lick for this practice session. I'm comfortable playing the lick at half speed. I'm also comfortable playing it at three quarter speed. At tempo, however, if this is where uh, a tempo is, I feel like I'm right at my limits, just a little bit under where I should be. Now to be comfortable at this level, your mastery of the lick should be like right about here. That's what makes this level comfortable okay so i'm not quite there yet and i don't think i'll be able to um work it up to that level in one practice sitting so what i'll do is i'll work on it for the next few days and then i'll post it as a separate short video just to let you guys see if i made it up to martin miller level or not there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful, if not entertaining. <laughs> I'd like to invite you to check out the description box below. It has links to all my other stuff, as well as my Amazon store, where you can buy this PDC t-shirt. Sales of this t-shirt supports this channel and helps me keep making videos like this for you all. Okay, so I'm counting on you. <laughs> If you haven't yet, please click on my head to subscribe. Please click here to watch another video. Peace, love, guitars, good heaven and stuff. I'm going to go watch the rest of Henning's video. And you should too. So, see you guys again soon. Bye.